So that's what sort of brings it down just a little bit. I kind of want to give it a, a high, high, high score. Yeah. And I'm sure most people will be like, oh, double leg is one of the best things ever. Right. But I kind of want to hate on it. Ooh. Perfect. So there's a theme on this channel where I rate things that I might not necessarily be uh, qualified to rate. For today's video, the ranking of takedowns, I wanted to bring in a specialist. So I've got Sensei Shintaru Higashi with me here with a spectacular judo channel. If you haven't checked it out yet, you should go check it out. I'm asking you to brag a little bit. Okay. Right, like okay. my father was a judo guy for years. He was yeah. part of the initiative to spread judo throughout the world. Right. And I did judo since I was a small kid. That's I was cool. a national champ. I fought in the world championships. And I have a red and white belt, you know, sixth degree. I wrestled in college. I was a Pan American champ for Sambo which is Russian, you know, grappling, wrestling, and judo what the? hybrid. Okay. You know, and then, uh, yeah, and I'm a brown belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu too. So what he's saying pretty much is that when you see the footage of he, him beating me up, take a little something <laughs> away from that. But let's get started. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go over all these throws that I've got listed. You're going to help me rank them. Ranking scale goes S to F. How are we going to sort of rank this stuff? So the main four factors. Ease to learn. Yeah. Risk of trying it. Yeah, risk of going for it and missing it. Effectiveness on non grapplers. Non grapplers. Yeah. And then obviously like coolness, because I've yeah. got to have a say in something too. Okay, <laughs> so we're gonna start off with you hit me with this one a bunch yesterday. Yeah. The Ouchi. Yep. The inside, what we call like an inside reaping sort of trip. Yeah. Trip. Yeah. Yeah, that's a. There's a little bit of a cool factor if you could nail them. Boom. Right away, right? I, then, felt, I felt less cool, but you were doing it, so I think that automatically <laughs> makes you seem cooler. But It's yeah. a cool technique. It's definitely there when the person has a wide base, yep. like when we were working out. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, if the person reacts to it, you have to be able to adjust and know the main lines coming yep. after that technique. Okay. Right? Yep. So it's like you cut a right 45 to the right, 45 to the left, yep. you turn it into a turn throw. It is a pretty effective throw, and I think you see it across all grappling styles, so it yeah. should be rated, you know, definitely higher than a D. Yeah. Right? I'm gonna go with a C on that one. Interesting. Yeah. I thought you were gonna go higher. Yeah, so C. I was thinking B, but I'll, I'll be honest, once I got like the hang of the idea of what you were doing, yeah. it is simply a matter of picking up the foot. Yes, for the if most you could part. shift your weight to that outside leg, yeah. then it. it I have to do other things after that in order to. That's right? fair. Yeah. And it was very fast how you adjusted to that. I might even give it a, maybe even a D, just because I didn't, I didn't like what you were doing. <laughs> so, but we'll stick with the C for that. One. Arguably, probably one of the cooler ones on this list. Yeah. We're gonna go with the Tomo. Tomonage. Ooh, yes. Yeah. Tomonage definitely coolest factor is top of the line. It's gotta be. Top of the Definitely line. Definitely one of the cooler ones. Pretty much what it is, is when you fall onto your back, you've got a hold of yeah. usually the gi. Gi, yeah. Yep. You can do it with the wrist and, and stuff. Yeah, and then you take your foot and you place it on probably their hip. Boom. And you yeah. throw them over top. Yeah. I actually got them. You see it in Street Fighter. <laughs> yeah, 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 I totally got them with it. No, go, 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 get down, go, go. I learned that in Three Ninjas. You see it in like, it's a very, uh, Movie, movie friendly. It's it's very movie friendly technique yeah. for sure. Yes, I probably did this technique in every single karate demo I made as a kid. Yeah, like when we did karate demos out in the streets for like the Harvest Festival. Yeah, I was like, hey, who's getting thrown this year? It's nice versatile roll. too because you can go back and you could also go two to the side. Yeah, so you have Yoko Tomonage, which is like a super super cool technique. And this is the thing: if you're a grappler. And then if you miss, you the person ends up in top position, but you could control them with your legs if you know how to use your legs for, for grappling. And right? odds are, if you are capable of doing this technique, you're yeah. also, you probably have a decent close guard. Yes, and if it's a one-to-one -one setting, mm -hmm. right, and then you, know, you go to your back and you know how to grapple from there, then it's a huge plus. I've actually seen this technique done in a courtroom where yeah. a guy grabs onto the other guy's suit yeah. and throws Oh, I think it. I've seen it before. Yeah, I mean, uh, right there, Pretty cool. Pretty useful. And anytime someone comes running at you, mm -hmm. this is sort of a, a great one. Yeah. If you could touch your chin and go. The problem is, it's very, the basic, basic one against non grapplers, it's mm. pretty relatively easy to learn too. Yeah. Right? And it is pretty yeah. effective. But yeah, it, this is a tricky one, man. This is a tricky one to rate. I would say, can you say C plus or B minus? Not complicated, right? No, you can't. Ah. We'll break it down even more. Coolness, S tier. Yeah. Yeah. Um, effectiveness against non-grapplers. Non yeah. How, how do we feel about that? Relatively high, but if you yeah. don't have a gi, it's a little bit more difficult. 
because you can't True. just go wrist and head, right? Okay, so yeah. that brings it down just a little bit because of the fact okay. that you can't do it without a gi. Uh, you can, right. but it's a little bit more difficult. All right, risk of missing it. Risk of missing it, it's pretty high if you miss it, but yeah. if you know how to grapple, yeah. then you're, you should you're in be okay. Place. Yeah. yeah. I, I'd be cool with the B tier. Yep. Yeah, B tier's fair. Okay, B tier. Yeah. Ooh, people are not gonna like that. <laughs> All right, let's go with the, uh, let's go with the single. Single leg. Yeah, we're gonna go back yeah. down to like real world effectiveness. Okay. What people yeah. do more often. More often, yeah. Because all the, all the judo throws are not real world effective, right? Because it's judo the same. That's not what I mean. That's not what I mean. <laughs> Uh, you don't see this yeah. one very often. You don't see the tomo very often. Is what That's true. You don't. Because you, you see don't. it more in the movies is what I yeah, meant. Yeah, single's a lot easier to go for, right? And then, yeah. you know, out so, of the... And a lot more people are taught a single. That's sure. very true. Yeah. That's very true. But the problem with the single a lot of times when it's taught, you know, in a simple way, mm -hmm. it does take a much longer time to master, right? Because you yeah. have to keep your spine straight and all this stuff. It's pretty effective throw. Yep. Technique, takedown. Yep. But grabbing the single is one thing, but finishing it is another. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, man, that's a tricky one, too. Yeah. Not, right? not super cool. No, not really cool. Not super cool. Right? It's the thing to do, yep. you know, and grapplers will argue that singles are better than doubles because you're not exposed to that guillotine risk, mm -hmm. right? So it is effective for both, right? Grapplers and non-grapplers. Yeah. That has to have merit. You could do it with or without a gi. Yep. That's a definitely a plus two. Yeah, so absolutely. So I'm going to go with B. B? I think B's fair. Yeah. doesn't take too long to learn. No. It's just not cool. It's just not that cool. Go with an ankle pick. Let's go with an ankle pick. I'm going to rate it pretty low. Okay. It takes a long time to learn because it's very timing oriented. Yeah, it right? is. Because, and it's already situationally oriented too. Because mm -hmm. you kind of sort of have to be in this low stance where your the distance between your head and your ankles are relatively close. Yeah. If you're standing upright, I'm not gonna be able to hit an ankle pick. No. Right. Yeah. And people, we have to distinguish low single versus ankle pick. Those are two different takedowns. Okay. Right? People think ah, just ankle pick. Yeah. Right. And I guess theoretically you could be in an underhook and then grab an ankle pick. But if you could pick the knee, you go for the knee pick, which yeah. is also on that list. Yes, right? it is. So ankle pick, you're going to be low on the list. Yeah. yeah. Ankle pick. It's cool for wrestlers, too. Like Kayla Sanderson, if you ever watch this guy wrestle, he's an unbelievable wrestler. Okay. When he does an ankle pick, yeah. you know, it's not flashy. Yeah. But for a wrestler yeah. to watch that, it's like, oh, my God, your mind is blown. Like, oh, right. they go gaga for it. Yeah. And it's that thing that you were talking about. My girlfriend sitting in the stands, like, okay, he grabbed his ankle and... Put yeah. it to the ground. Cool. Big deal. Yeah, right. I could you know? I could do that. Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. the average person wants to watch amplitude. Yeah. They don't want like they don't understand the nuance. They want to see this dude this roll one. onto his back and throw him over top of him. That's them. right. That's, That's right. right. So coolness factor if you're a grappler, yeah. Yeah, pretty cool. So learning curve takes a long time to learn. Risky. Risky, yeah, if you miss, you're kind of like down here, right? Right. And it's very situational. I'm going to go with a... Uh... All right, we can give it an F. Oh. <laughs> now, F is like, ideally what happens with this scale, more and more stuff is in yeah, the middle. Like a bell curve. F and the S. Yeah. You're still cool with that, though. <sighs> yeah, let's put F in there. All right, F it is. All right, so let's go with a knee pick now. So we just did an ankle pick. Let's talk about a yeah. knee pick. So it's very similar, right? Mm -hmm. You think like picking the ankle versus picking the knee. Yeah. But the knee is a lot accessible. All right, look, I can reach it's out and touch higher. your knee. A lot yeah. higher, yeah. Yep. Yeah, your ankle bone, yep. knee bone, and usually hip bone. Probably <laughs> goes closer too, right? Like actually closer distance wise. Yes. I know people are going to hate the F with the ankle pick. Yeah. But we're going to, you know, give the picking series a little bit more yeah. love. Yeah, you can't be too picky choosy. You know? Yeah. And then the knee pick, you could, you know, <laughs> Underhook, pick the knee and run him over. Yeah. And put him head first into the ground. That's true. Right? Yeah. So there's a little bit more of a coolness factor. Yep. Right? It is a little bit easier to learn mm -hmm. because the knee is closer. Yep. It is less dependent on the situation. Yeah. Right? Where you, the posture. Right? Hard to put a lot of weight on the knee too. Like yeah. with, a, with an ankle pick, you can like pick it up really quick. Yeah. You can put more weight on that foot. Yeah. You can't necessarily put so much more weight on the knee because it's something that bends towards yes. you yeah. who's grabbing it. True. This is a nice observation. Thank you. Yeah, black belt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sort of. Knee pick definitely higher on the list, right? Yep. So... Less, uh, probably less cool than an ankle pick, though. Mmm. But it can be hard. Ankle hard. pick, you rarely ever see an ankle pick that's like, boom. But a knee pick, you could run them over and... So the one ankle pick that I can think of was like the Yoel one. Oh, when you like reached out. That's yeah. like a Where once in a blue it. moon. Lower risk? Definitely lower risk. Lower risk. Because you miss and it's like, okay, you can just bring the hand back up here as opposed to if you go for an ankle pick, you're, you're a lot lower. You're way lower. Yeah, yeah. Balance is shifting. You might fall down. Ways. You might drop to your knee or something. I'd say one of the second most, second to fifth most thrown 
attacks in a street fight is a kick to the head to mm -hmm. somebody who's lower. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, so knee pick definitely is better. I'm gonna yep. go with a B on the knee pick. B tier for the knee yeah. pick. All right. All right, so let's go, uh, let's go front headlock. Front headlock takedown. Front headlock that's, takedown. That's here. Well, so there's a front headlock oh, position. Oh, front, like, front headlock this position. way. Yeah, Where yeah. You're when you have the head it. underneath the, the armpit here like this. Yep. And then, you know, it's very common to go into a guillotine choke from there. If yep. you're a freestyle wrestler, you crank it and throw. So yep. You can throw from there. Okay. Uh, using that position as a takedown. Okay. I think is a very, very more of a position than anything. So okay. it's pretty scary. Yeah. A lot of tent, you know, torque on the neck. Don't try yeah. this at home. Yeah. Right. Don't try Obviously. it on your friends. Right. Very dangerous. Uh, I will try it on you later. That's fine. <laughs> I asked for it. So yeah. I can only be so mad. And the front headlock presents itself many times mm -hmm. in combat, right? If someone oh, yeah, for tries sure. to take it down and they shoot in on the legs, whenever your head is higher than their head, it's a lot easy to just loop the hand over, right? Because right. all you need to do is beat the shoulder over the person's head, and now you're sort of in this front headlock position. Right. Generally Which, speaking, it's arm and a head, mm -hmm. but you know, if it's just the head, then you could, you know, yep. attack the you choke. Get a choke. And it's pretty uh, intuitive. Yeah. Someone shoots it on a, a double leg and you could catch yeah, if you're on your feet, stay in balance, yep. people will grab it and squeeze the shit out of your neck. Yep, for sure. Okay, right? so the risks that go in, along with it are possibly getting legs taken out from under. Yeah, but if you hold on tight. It should be good. You can finish it yep. in a one-to-one -one setting we're talking about, yeah, right? Of course. Yeah, Easier right. to learn, it's intuitive. Yep. I might go with an A on this one. It's pretty cool. Pretty it's a cool, cool one too. Pretty cool options. Yeah. I, I, I think I'm okay with A. A, yeah. I'm cool with A. Yeah, I mean, I'm like kind of obligated as a main judoka to put more judo techniques up at the top. Of course. But you know, well, we haven't covered, try to be we haven't as, covered uh, too, yeah, too many of those. That's anyway. true, but I put Ochigari inside trip pretty low. Well, C tier. Yeah. It happens. I think Ogoshi. Okay, all is right. a good one. All right, let's go with Ogoshi then. Ogoshi. Yep. It's just a simple hip throw, okay. right? Under the arm, right? Hip toss? Hip toss, yeah. Okay. And that's taught in every single martial Everything. arts ever in the history of ever. 100%. Right? To be able to actually hit it on someone, mm -hmm. not so easy if the person knows just to drop their hips. <laughs> this was one of the cooler ones too. Really cool. Gotta be one of the coolest. It's intuitive, you see it in every single movie. Yeah, right. Definitely. And we're talking about against non-grapplers. Mm -hmm. And this is an important thing. Both of your legs are on the floor. Yep. Right, you're in the squat position, which mm -hmm. I like to call the universally athletic position. Anybody knee, who's anybody knees bent, in sport. hips underneath you, yeah. on your toes. Yeah, football, yeah. baseball, athletic. basketball, defense, universally athletic position. You throw yourself there. You yep. have light power, mm -hmm. right? Even if you miss, it's hard to miss. Even if you miss, the person's still kind of at, in front of you because you have the arms. Yeah. Right? So that might be an A. Okay. I'm going to say S, but no. That's, uh, does anything ever make it to an S? Very rare, one or two things. Yeah. One or two things will make it to an S. But that's up for you to decide today. Arm throw? Yeah, let's go with an arm throw. Ooh, that's gonna be awesome. Arm throw is probably one of the coolest techniques you can do, man. Ipon Senagi. Okay. So when I turn my back and I load you on my back and then I launch you over my head. Interesting, I actually- feet goes up. I don't know this one. You got hit with it yesterday. <laughs> Did I really? Yeah. Well, shoot. Oh yes, I yeah, did get yeah, hit yeah. with it. I remember that. Yeah. You hit me with it yesterday. Automatically less cool to me, <laughs> and I am in charge of the notepad. So, but convince me otherwise. Let's go. Well, it's super cool. You know, you go for it, and the person's foot goes over. Right. Pretty versatile because you could go standing. You could drop to your knees if you're in a you know padded surface. Yes. Right. And okay. It's very yep. different levels of stuff like that. <laughs> Definitely super cool, man. When yeah. you see someone's foot hit the ceiling, and it's also in every movie. So the coolness factor is an ass, right? You see True. it everywhere. Very cool. Um, to you. If you miss it, yeah. <laughs> if you miss it, it's dangerous. Because yeah. you have your back to your opponent. Yeah. And the person's arm is slinging over your shoulder. Yeah. So, you know, you go against, like, let's say, I know this is for non grapplers, but if you're going right. against a good Brazilian Jiu Jitsu guy, yeah. they throw their hooks and jump onto your back and then they can strangle you very easily. Yeah. If you go for it and you don't finish it properly. And we're definitely in a world right now where the average person, yeah. even not trained, yeah knows what a choke looks like. Oh, for sure, because of the UFC. Because yeah. of the UFC. More people are like, yeah, I watch the UFC and I, yeah, can, yeah. I can strike, and yep. I, know a, I know a good rear naked choke. Yeah. And people are strong enough to choke you without being trained. Yes, and it takes a very long time to master. It does. And it takes a psychological element to it too, to commit to it and go for it. So we're stuck in this situation then, where yeah. we've got very cool, very useful, more risk, harder to learn. 
Okay, C's good. Then. C. All right, yeah, C it is. Yeah, C for the arm um, throw. You just don't like arm stuff. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go from that to a straight up suplex. Not that long time to learn. Mm -mm. No. Risk is pretty high. Actually, you know what? I would say it is one of the easiest ones to learn because it's the one that you see most in the streets. One hundred percent. Yeah, I guess you see kids who are just. Launching each other. You're right, and especially on the streets, which uh, yeah, you yeah. hate to see it. Risk if you miss it. And you, Ideally, you have their back. You already have their back. Yeah, but unless you it's can go like belly a, to belly. Unless it's belly to belly, but but you know uh, we'll go we'll go belly to butt. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> back to belly. <laughs> yeah. Super cool. Yeah, very cool. Effective. Effective. Especially against non grapplers. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Effective <laughs> non grapplers. That's what a yeah. non-grappler looks like in that situation. Right, I mean, risk, that's got to be up there, right? It, it. Got to say A. A? Can we call it an uranage and give judo a little cred here? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, suplex, yeah. It's like, yeah, we, you know, wrestling's got a lot of techniques in there. Yeah. Right, that's already getting a lot of love. Of course. Call it uranage. Uranage, yeah. okay. Uranage. Also, I apologize for not knowing the yeah, verbiage right. for all yeah. of this. I was taught by... A very, very white guy. Who <laughs> I don't think he knew any of it. And he was also taught by a white guy. By a very, very white guy. Yeah. Yeah, it's all good. Yeah, it happens. Let's go foot sweep. Foot sweep. Foot sweep. Yeah. Which is like a. Yeah, on the foot, foot goes across. Yep. Super cool. Yep. Right? How the hell did this guy fall? Mm -hmm. You know, and it's one of those things like we're used to standing around, keeping our balance, right? You yep. walked here. Yep. You know, you walked to the airport. You didn't fall. Yep. No. I hope so. I actually did fall once today. It snowed out. It was snowing out. Yeah, it's yeah, it was pretty cool. Snowing and you know what sucks? Mm -hmm. I had just beforehand, I was watching, there was like a, a group of teenagers that were in front of me. Yeah. And I, I watched one of them fall and I'm like, <laughs> and, then I did, <laughs> and then I did the exact same thing. You are more used to standing. Yeah. So when you do take someone's balance and take their feet out from under, they swept me off my feet. Super oh. cool. And uh, Michael rest. Jackson even sings about it, so. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> to be able to take someone's like literally the thing that they have most connected with them not falling down is yep. their feet. So taking that oh. away from them yeah. with your feet. Very cool. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Relatively easy to learn, hard to master, because yeah. it is timing oriented. Very right? yeah. timing is very, very important. The weight if the weight is on that foot, it's hard to kick that leg out from underneath yep. him. Effective against non grapplers, mm -hmm. low risk if you miss. Yep. Not that low risk because you could take yourself off balance too. Yeah. Right? But then if you miss and if it's mistimed, it's generally you just end up kicking him in the shin. Yep. So not that crazy. Yep. And you give him something to think about. Something to think about. Should you give him an S? No, I can't give him. It does usually the rule with S is. Could it be any better? Like, is there anything about it that makes it, that gives you like a little hesitation to throw it? Does it put you off the center line? If you do it correctly? If, I, if I'm throwing a big right hand, yeah. are you an inherent risk of getting caught with it? Well, yeah, you generally you stand di directly in front of me. Right. And then usually if we're shuffling in this direction, I want to be lined up to your back hand, right? That's something very simple. Yep. Okay, definitely not an S. Not an S? Not an S. Easy A though. Yeah, let's give it an A. Okay. You, you had some hesitation there even for the A. Were you going to go from is, S to B? Uh, yeah, we'll put it at a B. Because it it does, B. balance does really matter. Now, yeah. going from something that's like a very tall technique, mm. we're going to go for a double leg next. Oh, double leg takedown. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Very cool. Very cool. You see it in football, you see it in everywhere. Yep. Very effective. But I kind of want to hate on it. Ooh, you know, because it, it's the argument of like the guillotine risk. Yeah. Right? Yep. And people are used to staying on their feet. Mm -hmm. People are good at it. Yeah. You know, in single leg, you have one leg in there. Balancing on one leg is different. Much more different. Right? Yeah. Much more. And much. size can really make a difference here. Yeah. I've done the double leg for a year. I'm trying to take down someone that's, that has 50 pounds on me that mm -hmm. knows how to stay on their feet because they played football. Yep. That person's not going to take that person down. Okay. In my humble opinion. Sure. Right? So that's what sort of brings it down just a little bit. I kind of want to give it a, a high, high, high score. Yeah. And I'm sure most people will be like, oh, double leg is one of the best things ever. Right. And then they'll make arguments like, have you ever seen Jordan Burroughs? People want to give it a very high rate. Mm -hmm. You know, and you see it in wrestling, you see it in grappling. Yeah. But the stuff where you take the drop step and throw the knee on the floor, you can't really do that on the street. True. Right? Yeah. And there's a reason why. Yeah. Because when you're wrestling, naturally your stances are lower. You need to get below the person. Mm -hmm. If we're fighting and the person's standing up, yeah. you don't need to go that low to right. put the knee on the floor. Right? Yeah. Just kind of so, what are we thinking? I want to give it a B. A B. Okay. Man, we're going to get so much hate for this. 
Yeah. Tons of hate. Yeah, you are. You are. Yeah. People will make arguments in the comments. They'll act like it's you when they comment <laughs> on mine, so that's fine. <laughs> a lot of bees here. And I think that actually is kind of reflective of takedown's yeah. a pretty... Yeah. It's a pretty smart thing to do yeah. if you know how to do it. Yeah. We've got three left. Let's go with the the Kung Lee special. Mm. We're going to go with the scissor takedown. Scissor takedown, yeah. Kani Masami, they call him judo. Very difficult to learn. I could imagine. It takes a long time to learn. Hard to practice, too, I bet. Hard to practice, and this is the thing, like, this is probably the one that's going to get the most hate, because people do this successfully in grappling all the time. Sure. They outlawed it in judo because it's dangerous. People were sitting Makes on sense. the legs. Yeah. And it's not so much where I go, but if I'm going, and then you change angles, yeah. then I might land on your knee funny. Right. Right? And then if you're going to get proficient at it, mm -hmm. right, you have to train it. Yeah. And a lot of schools don't allow you to train this. Thank yeah, you. it makes it pretty difficult. Right. I know a lot of schools that are like, you can't use this in practice. Sure. And if you can't use it in practice, the only thing you could do is kind of drill it. Yep. And now all of a sudden, you're going to go for it live. Yeah. Right? The special so. specialist grapplers will be proficient at it and very good at it. Yeah. And it is super effective at the high level. For right? sure. But for the average Joe, mm. right? Yeah. Hard to train, hard to learn. Yeah. If you miss it, you're sort of dropping to the floor. Yeah. But to be fair, average Joe, you're not really worried about their knee. Yeah. So if it goes wrong, okay. But That's also yeah, if yeah. it goes wrong and they just like get a good step back, yeah. Like an athletic person, they they manage to really create distance as they see you coming yeah. in. Then you're on the floor. Yeah. And also you have to, you know, bring my body downward this way here. Right. Right. And then maybe if you're leaning into me, yeah. I I give you a good shove on the way. Yeah. And I might land on my head. Yeah. So risk's pretty high. Yeah. Coolness factor is there. Obviously. Right? Everybody yeah. likes that take down. Everybody it's the coolest does. thing. Bro, F. Probably the coolest on the list. F. Oh. <laughs> F tier. Do we have any Ds? We have one. Oh, we have one F? We have one F. You wanna go D? Just do the coolness. What was F? Ankle pick. <laughs> Ankle pick's not cool. It's just not cool. It's just not cool. I, I vote for D. But if you feel so strongly about it. <laughs> All right, let's go D. It's super cool, so it's D. Okay. And D. I'm glad we have a couple of Ds in there. Yeah. Well, Soto's interesting. It's the first technique you learn. I don't know why. Outside trip. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. That was actually the first one we learned. Yeah. Very difficult to do. Mm. Have you ever learned it and then try to do it on someone that's resisting? Mm -hmm. And all they so, do is go like so, this? So the way we learned it, pull them in. Yeah. Twist, step behind. Somewhat. Yeah. And like kind of block their foot from being able to recoup. As you take them down. So many ways to learn it, so many ways to teach it. Sure. You know, pull them in. Person has a stiff arm like this. Yeah. Impossible tough. to put in. Right? Yeah. So it's like very difficult to learn. Yeah. But we're talking about non grapplers here too. True. Right. So if you catch that foot going around, mm -hmm. and you commit to it, you can take the person out pretty good. Yeah. Oh. But then again, if you go for it, mm -hmm. risk is kind of high because. Yeah you may not off balance them properly. So yeah. there is a moment where you're on one foot yep. and the other person is two feet. Two feet. They yeah. shove you yeah, backwards. It's a, it's a very like, if you don't do it right, it's a very neutral position. Yeah. Where you're both more so side by side. Well, neutral is okay. Yeah. But if you're on one leg and the other person has two legs and then you shove me while I'm going for the throw. Very true. I'm going to get taken down. Yeah. Right? It has to be pretty aggressive. It has like, to be. It's hard to do yeah. this one defensively. And it takes too long to master. Yeah. Really. It's a very long time. Yeah. I could probably hit it at the bar. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> no biggie. Yeah. It depends on how many beers I've had, too. <laughs> That's fair. That's right? Fair. But it's a, it's a real thing. Yeah. So, man, I don't want to give it a D. I think it's what, I think the reason they teach it first is because it teaches you all the basic principles of making somebody not yeah. on their feet anymore. Like you have, they have to be off balance. Yes. You have to be able to keep their legs yeah. from coming back to yeah. them. Like you have to be a little bit more aggressive with true, it. True, true. Maybe, I don't know, I was just kind of. You know what, C is good. C? Okay. Yeah, C is good. All right, last one. Yeah, Koshi, Koshi Guruma. Yes. Yeah, Koshi right. Guruma, headlock throw. Okay. Very, very spectacular, beautiful. Mm -hmm. I've hit it in wrestling, I've hit it in judo. Headlock throw is? Just like head and arm throw almost, and then you throw your hips across. So it's like a hip toss with the head, head and arm. If you miss and the head slips out, the person mm -hmm. has your back. Yep. If you go for it, you don't off balance them enough, they have suplex. Mm. Right? Dangerous. So it was a little bit risky. Yep. And like we talked about, suplex is A. Yep. Because it's very intuitive. Mm -hmm. And you see every little chump getting into YouTube fights is suplex Whew. another person. Yep. So the risk is high. You also do see this one a lot too. You do see it. You do see this one a lot yeah. with people who don't really know yeah. how to do it. 
And then you do end up in this headlock position where you're squeezing the head. Stab myself in the head. It is a, a very interesting one. I, I want to give it a B. Okay. Wait, let's mull this over. That's what do you think? I almost wrote B. It is cool. Learning curve. Pretty easy. Relatively easy. Relatively easy. easy I would understand. have to say it's pretty easy because you see people do it so often. Yeah. And the head is something that is one of the most manipulatable things yeah. on the human body. Yes. Like not, not a lot of strength up here. Yeah. And then, you know, people say if, like, unless people uh, know what they're doing. But. Yeah. And then people say like, oh, you know, a uh, beginner will grab the head and squeeze mm -hmm. and then, oh, that's so easy to get out of. Yeah. But it's actually not that easy to get out of. Mm -hmm. No, not if you they've, know, if they've got like a little bit of strength to them. Yeah. Every self-defense is just like, oh, you just tuck your shoulder and then do you whatever. Elbow them in the genitals yeah. and then you grab them by the hair. Yeah. But you know, this is some real hurt. And if they start cranking and yanking, yeah, right, and then torquing it, yeah, it's pretty painful. So, oh man, you gotta give it an A then. A, all right. I wanted to say B because oh, a head slips out and the person's behind you and you give up position. Yeah, but we're talking about non grapplers. <laughs> yeah, no, I think this is a good list, man. I think so too. Very good list. I'm amazed at how. Uh, how well it all flows together. Flows you together. You didn't think you'd be able you... to do this. No, I didn't. Yeah. Yeah. Because right. I was trying to just rank it myself, mm -hmm. like talking it over with you. That having the F through the S helps a little bit. Yeah. For sure. Definitely. I want an F in there. Oh, we have one F. We have one it's F. An ankle pick. You stand by that? I stand by it, yeah. Well, the truth is, the ankle pick just sucks. <laughs> Alright, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to see this man throw me a bunch, make sure you watch both of our videos on actual, like, sparring. If you want to learn way more about judo, make sure you subscribe to Sensation Taro Higashi. Thank you for having me, man. It's a, a pleasure to meet you and to hang out with you and collab with you. And yes, yeah. enjoy the donuts after you get oh. thrown 100,000 times. He gave me donuts. Actually, that's, that's a great point. I didn't think about that. He bribed me to make you guys subscribe. So keep that in mind. That's right. So... He might just send you donuts if you subscribe. Yeah. And then, of course, you know, like, subscribe or I'll throw you. I'm not really going to throw you. That would be expensive. <laughs> Sweet.